So last night I stumbled across this video by Chase Irons on SLU. And one of the questions that he had was, how much do I take injected versus orally? And his suggestion was just take the same amount. I don't agree with that. And I'm going to tell you why. Number one, we don't know what the oral bioavailability is of SLU. So if you react one way to an oral dose of X, you may not act the same way to an injectable dose of the same quantity. It may be many, many times more potent and kind of send you for a loop. So let's take a look at this and see what we're working with. Now it's suggested here that SLU may have low oral bioavailability, but these numbers on this AI overview don't quite add up to me. Uh, they're saying low bioavailability is indicated in that an oral dose of approximately 50 milligrams, that's 50,000 micrograms, might be required to achieve a therapeutic effect. We know that's not true. If a guy chase iron size, a 240, 250 pound bodybuilder, is getting a therapeutic effect at 500 micrograms, you're not going to need 50,000 micrograms to achieve that same effect. So my advice is save your money. Don't, don't push that high, uh, especially for safety reasons to start with. But let's move on. In contrast, the effective dose via intramuscular injection could be as low as 250 micrograms. Now, 250 micrograms is actually a very common oral dose and I don't know where there's, they're pulling these numbers from, but it doesn't tell us really much about oral bioavailability, what the percentage is. That's what we want to find out so that we can do an effective conversion for injection. It goes on to say, structurally related to pore absorption. The structure of SLU is often described as a peptide analog or a small molecule. Small molecule peptides often have pore Poor oral absorption due to degradation by the digestive system and poor intestinal permeability. Now, these are issues that can be solved with complexing. For one, it is available in capsule form, as we know. Ester Pro drugs, they're working on an SLU-332 acetate and nanoparticle encapsulation versions to enhance its oral absorption. We don't even have to go that far. We can use HPBCD permeation enhancers give it that treatment, we'd probably see a two, three, maybe even tenfold increase in oral bioavailability, depending on how poor of, you know, absorption we're working with from the beginning. According to this AI overview, it's not even that great of an oral delivery. So I would surmise that the dose needed for injection is actually very, very low. Typically things like this, where we're seeing quote unquote, low oral absorption from being too fragile and, and stuff like that and breaking down too quickly. We're looking at somewhere in the low single digits as far as absorbability goes. The one thing that is agreed upon across all the different sources that I can find is that the oral bioavailability is definitely going to be lower and significantly lower than what you would get from an injection as far as actual substance in your system. So I would not jump immediately to take the same amount as you would orally because that may be a hundred times, you know, if we're getting 1% absorption orally or 10%, it's going to be anywhere from 10 to a hundred times as potent. So there's a caution right there. Okay. The other question is, is what is the half-life? Now they suggest that it has a long half-life, but when bodybuilders take it, they typically need to take it two to three times a day to maintain the effect, which can be felt. You can feel warm. You can feel, you know, you have some extra energy for your workouts, things like that, some more sweating. And when that wears off and your body temp starts to go down, they typically take more. So with that in mind, we know that it's probably really effectively lasting about four or five hours in the system and then starting to clear out, right? We can't get hard numbers on the half-life, but we have a guess based on felt effects anecdotally across lots of anybody that you've heard of that's used it's going to tell you, eh, yeah, four, five, six hours, right? So we have some idea. We're in the low teens, low single digits bioavailability, more than likely, and we're in the four to five, six hour effective half-life in the system on a practical level. Now, the next question is, is how should we take it? Could it be injected in water? Here's the deal. It's not soluble in water. It's soluble in solvents like DMSO, but then again, what isn't? So then we want to ask, is it soluble in oil? 
Now, according to the initial AI overview, it says, nope, it's not soluble in oil, but this is why you have to double check and look into sources on this because we do the AI overview here, same company, same everything. And yep, SLU is soluble in oil. Now, the thing with it not being soluble in water, it never dissolves. It stays a separate thing. In oil, that's not the case as much. If you put it into a solvent, as they say here, create a stock solution in DMSO, yada, yada, relatively high concentrations in DMSO at up to 75 milligrams per milliliter. Will it hold more than that? Probably. So I will be investigating this myself. In fact, somebody just asked me if I could do a little research for them and see how much we can get to solve per milliliter in an injectable solution that's actually viable. Obviously, we're not going to use straight DMSO, but that's probably going to be involved if we're going to get a high concentration. I know for a fact that you can get up to 1,000 micrograms per milliliter using my standard oil kit. That's just what the kit's designed for, is things just like this. So if you want to experiment with your own SLU powder and put it in solution, my oil kit will actually work really well for that, up to 1,000 micrograms per milliliter. Probably higher, but I can just tell you that much because I know that oxytocin is very hard to solve itself in oil, but it'll solve it 1,000 micrograms. So no problem there. That would leave you a starting dose. Let's say you want to start with 100 micrograms just to be on the safe side. That's uh, a tenth of a milliliter. So a very tiny, tiny little shot. And that tiny little shot should last about 12 to 16 hours just in that volume. When you go up to 0.2 milliliters, that will last for about 24 hours in castor oil the way it's solved. Another option for SLU would be transdermal. It has a very low molecular weight, 290 grams per mole. That's well under the threshold. People think that it has to be under 500 grams per mole to solve with DMSO through the skin. That's not the case. That's without DMSO. With DMSO, I've had things that are 1,000 micrograms or 1,000 grams per mole, like oxytocin, clearly can be solved, trans it can get through transdermally with uh, DMSO. Now, can you buy it? You know, here's uh, Amazon, uh, five grams. So how many micrograms is that? So you're getting quite a bit there for a hundred bucks. I can't speak to the purity of this. This is just what's the easiest available powder to find uh, right there on Amazon. I'm not behind it. I don't have anything to do with it. I'm just saying it's widely available and open to experimentation. So the stuff is widely available. How should you take it? That's up to you. Officially, you shouldn't take it at all. But I'll say this, if you're already using it at like a thousand micrograms a day or something like that, don't expect to feel the same things from an injectable at the same dose. That's ridiculous. There's no way that that's going to be the same dose in your system, more than likely. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I mean, I might try it myself and go, oh, wow, it's a one-to-one -one somehow, you know, even though, you know, there's no way that's possible. When you inject, you're getting 100% in your system, and you should be cognizant of just how much you're putting in, because it might be multiple, multiple times more powerful than what you would get orally with what's actually absorbed and feel the effects of. The other thing to remember is if you go with a slow release formula, like using my oil conversion kit, after about 0.2 milliliters per injection, that will start to overlap if you take the same time every day because you've got a 24 hour plus clearance. So you have some buildup in the system and that, so that you could feel that more and more. But also keep in mind that when it's slow release, you're not getting that burst for a few hours. It's like insulin. When you have a long acting insulin, it takes a long time for that to go through your system. So the effects are not as dramatic. They're longer lasting. We're stretching those effects out. So just some things to think about. It will feel different and it will feel different under different solutions. So keep that in mind, stay safe, make smart decisions. And if you want to experiment with it, my oil kit is available.